so now we can talk about really the first half of Mass, which we call the Liturgy of the Word. So you can kind of break Mass up into two main parts. First is the Liturgy of the Word, where we hear God's Word, and then the Liturgy of the Eucharist, which we shift to in the second half. Um, the Liturgy of the Word, the first thing is that notice the posture of all of us. I will be sitting in my chair with the servers, you guys are sitting in your chairs, um, and then the lector would come up out of the altar and then go to proclaim that first Old Testament reading. We are sitting because sitting was a sign of um, listening and receiving. So we're listening and receiving the Word of God. Of course, you can follow along in the booklet or you can just listen to the Word. You know, either way, either way is acceptable. Um, but we're just trying to open our minds and hearts to God's Word. And that first one is a reading from the Old Testament. Usually, unless we're in the Easter season, then it's actually a New Testament reading. But most of the year, it's an Old Testament reading. So the lector will come up, um, bow, proclaim the Old Testament reading. Um, we're all listening attentively to the best of our ability. Um, and, and he or she will say the word of the Lord at the end, and we respond, thanks be to God. Um, after the Old Testament reading, then we shift into the response or a psalm. Typically, um, especially at Sunday Mass, this is sung by our cantors and, and max and our choir members. Um, the responsorial song is, in a sense, like we have that ref refrain that we're saying, and, and, and the music minister goes through the stanzas of the psalm. Um, the psalms are, are like, kind of like, um, sort of like poetry in the Old Testament. They were meant to be sung, um, sung with a congregation, and things like that. They do a wonderful job of kind of captivating the emotions of human life. You have song, psalms of like lament and sorrow, which certainly is a part of our life, right, to go through trial in life, an illness and death, a suffering of some sort. There's that psalm, psalm of like lament. You have some of great praise and thanksgiving, so we have times where we're just praising God, thanking Him. You have ones of great joy, um, uh, and, and just ones of great longing. There are psalms that are just desiring God, like, Lord, I long for you like a deer that yearns for running streams, you know? So we have different psalms that highlight different aspects of life, and they help us to enter into that. We think most of these are written by, by King David. The psalm response, in a sense, is capturing the theme of the Old Testament reading. The church purposely places that there. If the Old Testament reading was about like mercy, the psalm we might be responding to the psalm with the psalm response, like thanking God for His mercy. Usually, there's like a connection there between the Old Testament and we are literally responding with the psalm to that theme. So um, there's some connection there. After the psalm. The lector comes back up for the New Testament reading, so now we're going into the New Covenant. Um, usually that's one of St. Paul's letters, or there's letters from St. James or St. John, um, and, or St. Peter, or the Book of Revelation, any of the New Testament readings that are not Gospel readings. So we hear that New Covenant reading, the New Testament reading, um, by the writer to one of his uh, communities, and that applies to us today as well. Um, from there, again, same thing, the word of the Lord, thanks be to God, I'm grateful for the, the word of God. From there, um, we will begin the, another procession, a little mini procession, to, uh, to, the, to read the gospel. So again, notice that our postures change, we're not sitting for the gospel, we're not sitting anymore. Um, everybody stands because we're honoring and reverencing these words of Jesus. So if you can remember in the Old Testament, those first five books of the Old Testament, were like Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, um, Deuteronomy, uh, Numbers. Those were like the prime books of the Old Testament, the Torah. They were really important. For the New Testament, our most really important books are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So these are like the most important four books of the New Testament. So we stand for these to reverence the words of Christ and the life of Christ that is written about in there. Not only do we stand, but only the priest or deacon proclaims it. There's like that sacramental kind of connection there. Um, we also sing, like we sing the Alleluia. So Alleluia is the song that was sung after Jesus rose from the dead. We're celebrating now with beautiful flowers and things the Easter season. New life, resurrection. So Alleluia is a way of proclaiming the resurrection. So we are singing that together. I come forward or deacon comes forward. If deacon is during the gospel, actually, he, uh, the church has him come before me and ask for a blessing, and I give him a blessing, so you'll see me doing that. He'll ask me, I'll give him a blessing, I'll bless Deacon Mike or the deacon. He or I will come forward, we usually bow uh, 
to, again, to reverence the altar. And then we pulled up this nice book called the Gospel Book. Again, this has the, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John readings um, that are chosen for the liturgy um, that, we, that we do. So we pulled up the Gospel Book for our procession. Sometimes we'll do a longer procession, like around the altar. Sometimes a shorter one, straight to the ambo. Um, Often we'll have servers lead us over. Again, it's a procession of the gospel and it's highlighting that importance while singing the hallelujah. And again, when we get to the ambo, as this is called, where the word of God is proclaimed, we give the, the greeting, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And we say, Deacon or I will say, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to, let's say John, according to John. And we make a sign of the cross with our thumb on the Gospel book. And then we all make a sign of the cross on our forehead, on our lips, and on our heart. So, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, and you guys all say glory to you, O Lord. And while we make that sign of the cross on our mind, on our lips, and our heart, we're saying that we're opening our whole self up mentally, verbally, and within our soul to God's beautiful word. Um, through the gospel, the good news of, of Jesus Christ. So we're trying to be as open as we can, listening to what the Lord has to say to us, how this can apply to our lives today, too. Um, so we go through, we proclaim the gospel. Sometimes we incense the gospel book, um, reminding us of the sacredness of it and of, of uh, the dignity of the gospel. And then at the end, we'll, the priest or deacon will say the gospel of the Lord, and you all respond, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we kiss and reverence the gospel book, and we actually say a little prayer um, asking God, asking Jesus through the words of the gospel to forgive us and cleanse us of our sins. So we, we have some prayers that we say out loud, some we say silently, that one is said silently for the people. Um, then of course, we'll come down and do our homily. Um, remember, the homily is, um, it, it's meant to just help, help us like bring together some of that liturgy of the word and prepare us for the Eucharist. I think there's a real goal that we can take that the word that we just heard and preach a message with it to the people, hopefully taking what's been written thousands of years ago and applying it, the timeless word of God, right? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, as Hebrews tells us. Applying it to our lives today. How does this apply to my life, my struggles, my desires, my family, you know, my work, like just, my journey through life, right, and all of its ups and downs. So how does the, the word of God, the gospel of Jesus, apply to that today? So there's, a, there's an effort there made by the priest or deacon to preach a message from that about our world today, from the wisdom of God's word. And then there's also this hope that we are, he, he is helping to prepare us to have greater desire and longing to be fed by Jesus in the Eucharist. So it's applying the word to today in our lives, and it's also opening us and preparing us for the banquet, to come to the banquet of the Lord, the wedding feast of the Lord in the Holy Eucharist. Um, and so that's our liturgy of work.